welcome to Whose Line Is It? Anyway, I'm here with my co-host, Noah Gross. Noah, uh, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so for those who are unaware, uh, I've been on Elijah's, multiple of Elijah's shows here and there. Uh, I, like a lot of listeners, am football obsessed, always have been. I played in high school and I got to coach for a couple years in L.A. I played and coached offensive and defensive line. Um, for me personally, I was never the guy who was the biggest, strongest, the fastest. I just, I was a guy who won with technique and attitude. So now I'm obsessed with the little details of offensive and defensive line play, hand placement and where your head goes and play sidestep and all the little things that kind of make a play come together. I find fascinating. On the show, what we do is we break down offensive, defensive lines because you know, we, we all know football's won and lost in the trenches. I want to talk a little bit about an upcoming game uh, this coming weekend between two teams with some of the best offensive and defensive lines in the NFL. Yeah, the Bucks and Eagles, uh, they're going to be matching up. Uh, they met in week six. Yeah, week four, re real early on, like week four, week five, yeah. Uh, and this was kind of before the Eagles found their identity, and it was before the, the Bucks really gelled too. And I think that even though the Bucks should win this game, I think that the Eagles might be primed for an upset just because of how good that offensive line is. And really what I, what I want to talk about is the Eagles playbook. They essentially run four concepts, right? Um, they run inside zone between the tackles. They run play action, uh, like play action shot plays usually, like they try to get something downfield uh, to Devontae Smith. They run options, so RPO, uh, run pass options, or right. they run – Read options, you know, uh, zone read. So Jalen Hurts will keep the ball and read the outside defender. So how does that work? Like from an offensive line standpoint, like like what's the what's the key to making those plays uh, successful? Um, because they've been really successful with Philly, and y'all have been scoring a lot. So uh, like, what what are some of the keys to that? Yeah, that's a good question. So what you're describing again, the four type of plays they run. You do you will see occasionally a pitch, a counter, a trap, those things. But the Eagles really do rely on that inside zone concept, which is the but which is the foundation of the RPO and the read option and the shot plays you talk about. And there's a couple of big factors that go into that. First of all, it's we were talking about just the inside zone concept. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get your linemen out in out into space essentially to create multiple lanes for your running back to choose from. Because as an offensive lineman, when I go into the play, my, uh, let's say I'm supposed to take my man left and he ends up going right. I, it's, I am fine taking him right and washing him down the line. All that means is the running back, instead of now going into the A gap, bounces into the B gap. But, that, there, but there needs to be that tr A, that trust, and B, that chemistry between offensive lines and running backs. One of the most frustrating things as a lineman is opening a huge hole, but it's not where it was, quote, supposed to be. And mm. it goes for two yards instead of 12 yards. That, that it, it's right it's because, because the running back doesn't go to the right spot, right? Exactly. Because again, mm -hmm. when you're trying to move 300 pound masses of men, sometimes that's hard to do. Sometimes oh, yeah. they don't go where you want them to go. So if mm -hmm. they say to you, I'm not going to go where you want me to go, but I am going to take myself out of the play as an offensive lineman, that's doing your job. That's a big, big thing when I coached both my running backs and we would, you know, do seven on seven sessions with running backs and tight ends and all that. I would say replace the evacuated zone. If someone came from somewhere, there's no longer anyone there. That's really the logic of it. And it's similar to how, like, you know, if someone's going to blitz you as a quarterback, you want to throw it to where the blitzer comes from, right? You want to throw it where the guy leaves. And another big thing to remember is that, you know, in these inside zone concepts, one of the big, big building blocks of that is what's called a duo block. Some might call it a dumbbell block or different words for it. But it essentially means you're taking two offensive linemen to initially block one player. And then at some point, one of those offensive linemen will scrape off and get a second or third level defender. And that's really the right. big key of the inside zone is ha is nailing that duo block and getting to your next man. Because mm -hmm. if the linebacker sheds his guy or if the defensive tackle gets skinny and gets through the two men, it's blown up. So it sounds to me like basically the key is communication between tackle and guard or guard and center. It's right? all chemistry. It's right. so, so, so much chemistry. 
Because as you go through training camp, as you go through OTAs, as you go through pre as you do all these things, you and the guy you're blocking with start to learn each other's methods. When do you break off and when do you scrape? At what percentage of I got him versus you got him do you go versus I go? It's really, really hard to just step in and know it, which is why I give some of the Eagles backups. Nate Herbig, Jack Driscoll, Landon Dickerson, Sua Opeta, a lot of credit for coming in and having some really, really good blocks. And I, I want, I want to actually ask you yeah. real quick i want to ask you about that because you mentioned landon dickerson you mentioned um Her- herbig is his name herbig yeah herbig right and these are guards and they've all had pretty successful years so far i want to ask how much does center jason kelsey have to do with that everything starts and ends with jason and that's how yeah. it has and that's how it will be unfortunately it's probably going to be his last season um but it's been an honor and a pleasure watching him but no what really makes it go is that jason kenner Jason Kelsey, rather, is the most athletic center in the National Football League. And when, again, when you talk about these duo blocks and getting to the second level, the majority of the time, Kelsey is the one getting off those blocks. Jason can get to the next level like no one else can. But he's also an undersized line. He's about 295, which is still a big guy, obviously. But when you're going against, like, someone this week in a Vita Vea, mm-hmm. you need that extra help from your guard or from your tackle or your tight end, whoever it may be, to get that initial push and get him out of the way. Because if yeah. you don't do that part first, you can't go to the second level. Right. And, and the thing about that is, you know, you mentioned Vita Vea, um, oh, defensive tackle for the Bucks. He is pure, like, 350 pounds and is probably all rock solid. Like, that dude yeah. is insane. Um, so the Eagles kind of have their work cut out for them in terms of, you know, when it comes to these duo blocks, they might not be able to get to the second level as fast as they would have liked because Vea just takes up so much space. Uh, but – once the Eagles started actually running the ball late in the game, they were actually doing a really good job of it. So really, to me, the key to the game is like the Eagles just absolutely need to get that run game going early. Right. And that's a big thing is that it's like you said earlier, this Eagles team is not the Eagles team that they faced in the early season. And this Bucks team is not the team they faced in the early season. Don't get me wrong. I think the Bucks are going to win and I think they're going to win pretty handily. And like we said, it all starts with Vita Vea who really is what he does and what he's designed to do really causes problems for the Eagles. And that's where the other plays, like the RPOs, the read options, the shot plays, and those occasional traps and counters to get him hesitating just a little bit becomes so, so important. Because when you can oh, yeah. make a defense hesitate, you can kill a defense. Something I noticed when watching the Bucks game and really when watching Eagles film from throughout the season is the Eagles pretty much, regardless of who they play, They've done so well at just keeping a clean pocket for Jalen Hurts. And don't get me wrong, Hurts has had an excellent season. Uh, I think he's a really, really good quarterback. I also think that he's in such an ideal situation for him because the dude has time to throw. He's got so mm-hmm. much time back there, and it's a, uh, it's real, it's kind of awesome to see. Uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and again, when you talk about last year, all the injuries, you know, eighteen different starting lineups, one of the worst lines in football, and to come a year later and see how far Jalen himself has progressed as a passer because he's given the time to pass the ball is just so satisfying. Because I think people sometimes don't necessarily understand that in order for your quarterback to progress, your offensive line has to progress. They're, right. they're, they're codependent on each other. Really, the, the Eagles' main problem on offense, from what I've seen, is the right wide receivers. Can, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's it's a 1A, little column A, little column B thing. You know, the receivers, Devontae Smith's an absolute monster, and he's going to be for a very long time. Jalen Rager's a bust. There's no other way of phrasing that. J.J. Ortega-Whiteside is a bust in the NFL. But, you know, for a second-round pick. But long story short, the Eagles receivers leave much to be desired, which affects Jalen in a couple of ways. Like, number one, he said, when he gets the butt in the ball and they're dropping it, it's brutal. I mean... There were some Rager drops this year. And, I mean, I don't mean to keep harping on the guy, but some of the Rager drops, I mean, you could see Jalen just just drop his head. Like, come on, man, what more do you do for you? It makes him hesitant to hit his back foot on that five-set drop and drill a throw into a zone window because he doesn't trust the receiver to make that grab. Right. And, so and, why something... should, and, frankly, why should he in a lot of cases? And that, that's something I noticed, too, with uh, Lamar Jackson this season is, uh, yeah, you know, he doesn't always trust his receivers. So... So, yeah, I guess, you know, back to the Eagles, you know, offensive line, their pass blocking, really, really good. Uh, conversely, the Bucks have really good defensive line, right? However, now, you know, some of these guys, not healthy. Shaq Barrett, we're not sure if he's going to play. Not sure if JPP is going to play. Right. But, um, so, you know, that, that leads me to think that the Eagles have a real shot at winning this game. 
I think that like right now the Bucks are as vulnerable as they're gonna get, and we'll see if the Eagles can take advantage of it and uh, earn themselves a earn themselves a trip to Green Bay. Right. The game plan is a very simple game plan. Run the clock, give Brady as few possessions as possible, convert on third down, get three right. to four yards every play, stay on schedule, make a play and stick to it, hit him in the mouth. I know these are cliches, but it's true. It's true. No, it, it, here's, like, that's what the game plan is, and right? Have, right. If you're gonna have eight if you can have eight minute, you know, twelve yard drives that end in touchdowns, Tom right. only gets the ball so many times. Right, exactly. And and the key to beating a great quarterback, well, there's two keys, right? Keep him on the sideline. And get pressure in his face, yep. right? You know, Absolutely. get in his and face, particularly with Brady. It's, and, and Brady's the goat. No, he's denying that. But it's it's the formula for him is pressure up the middle. Whereas right. Brady, he's not going anywhere. He's uh, he's not not much of a scrambler. Um, he, he's he's had a couple this year, but you know, it's not really his thing. Right. Okay. So one thing I noticed: these two teams uh, both played the Saints this season, and for the Bucks, there were two horrible games. Uh, the first one, you know, their offense was able to move the ball and score a little bit. Second one, they got shut out nine to yeah. zero, uh, and the defense showed up. Uh, the Bucks defense against uh, Taysom Hill led Saints team, but the offense was nowhere to be found. However, when the Eagles played the Saints again, you know one of the best defenses in the league, they had a great day, uh, and I think that's because that was, that was their coming out party. That yes. was the, that was the game that turned everything around. Yes, and, and I'd also I do think that the game against the Chargers also that you, you, we see a lot of um, yeah that was a very good loss. Great, as good a loss as a loss could be. Um, exactly. but the game against the Saints, that was super impressive because the Eagles really kept on running inside zone and like zone reads pretty like much all day after play after play. Yeah. And, and they were ripping off chunks of yards almost every time. And uh, I think that the reason is it seems like the Saints are kind of geared to beat guys like Tom Brady, right? You, you know, guys where you can get pressure in his face. But, you know, when you play a guy like, like Jalen Hurts, you got to respect his speed and the fact that he could. Uh, you know, get out of the pocket. So, you wanna you wanna talk about that a bit? Yeah, and you know, it's 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 a big thing when you talk about we talked about earlier about the hesitancy in a defense, getting them on their heels as opposed to coming forward. It's playing back versus playing forward. As a linebacker, you're taught your first step is always forward in the run game. If you can make them hesitate in some capacity, that gives you the advantage. It gives you that split second to get downhill first. And with Jalen and his mobility, what it can do is force a def- at least one defender, if not two, to hesitate and take and essentially take themselves out of the play. So when you're running when you're running the read option, very traditionally speaking, it's it's very simple. You're reading the last man on the line. Does he crash hard into the running back to try to make the play, or do they stay home as a as, as, for the quarterback? Now, when I played and when I coached, I cannot overemphasize how much I emphasized staying home right if i told my kids to stay home and we got beat on an option an end around something like that they were running the play that pops into my head was the game-winning touchdown that he had against carolina on that read option you saw both the safety on the the safety who was playing down in the box and the outside linebacker on the end of the line both bit hard inside because they've been running the ball so well and Jalen just walked in and that is the main benefit of having a mobile quarterback the fact Absolutely. that you got to respect the speed you got to respect the fact that you get outside and by doing that you make defensive players go against their every instinct which is to attack the ball carrier and so you know the bucks they're gonna have their work cut out for them too against a really really good pass blocking team and you know a team who is just excellent with uh inside zone runs so lastly noah last thing i want to ask you you got your game coming up Eagles going to Tampa Bay to face the Bucks could be a good game. Uh, I, I know, I know where you're going to go with this, but what is your final prediction? So I think it'll be a good game. I think the Eagles are going to. I think they'll play good football. I think that what will this game will really come down to is experience more than anything else. The Eagles are a very young team, and even the guys who aren't young aren't haven't don't have a ton of playoff experience, mostly speaking. So I think it's going to come down to execution in the red zone and on third down. I think the Bucks are going to be better about getting six, not three. And as a result, my final score prediction is 24 to 16. So it sounds like, you know, both teams have four scoring drives, but three of them are touchdowns for the Bucks. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'll make my prediction right now, too, uh, just for the sake of it. I think it's going to be a little closer. I still think the Bucks will win 30 to 27. 
I'd like that. That'd be fun. I could see that. It'd be a fun game. It'll be a fun game. Yeah. Um, so there you have it. Uh, hope you all enjoyed the show. Wish I didn't have to end it, but got to drive the line somewhere. Uh-huh.